Hi everybody. Here's Lexi and me. And um Hey Lexi. Are we excited about Jesus coming back to get us? <laughs> yes, we are. And actually, I'm thinking it would be pretty cool if on Friday, as Lexi and I are visiting the high-risk pregnancy women. Come on. Come on. Come on. You're in this with me. Uh, we've been doing this for three years. I got an email from them yesterday saying, if a patient tells us, Lexi, if a patient tells us, God bless you, thank you for coming to see me, we're not allowed to say God bless you back. <laughs> I mean, what is this world coming to? Okay, say bye. Say bye. Everybody, I'm so sweet and wonderful. Um, yeah, get this. I get an email with all the rules. All the rules that say we cannot talk about God. We cannot reference uh, anything political, religious, anything. I'm just like, as far as I knew, we still had God and God we trust in our money. But I started to think about um, firing back with an email um, that, you know, since when have we not lived in a country that is, has the freedom of speech and religion? But it's not worth my time because we are at the end. Is this the end? Um, I'm doing this Bible study uh, with uh, my new church, Is This the End? And um, I'll just give you the top, the, the, um, Is This the End for America? Is This the End of the World? Talking about ISA and, and Russia coming back. Um, the Rapture of the Redeemed. And then it ends with the tribulation. But it talks about the increase of intolerance, the apathy of America, which is what this year, this week's is on. Um, America, American Christians are apathetic. I don't understand it. Um, so today I went back to uh, my Bible study that uh, ended in May. And normally it's just a really solid Bible study and I really enjoy the women there. They invest a lot of time in this Bible study and a lot of them are just, uh, you can just see the Holy Spirit in them. Uh, different races, we have a big Chinese group, um, different races and I was happy to be back and then I had a hard time paying attention. We have children and babies in there and I thought wow if if the rapture happens next Tuesday all the children will be gone all the babies will be gone and uh, most of the leadership will be gone and a large percentage well not large I'm gonna say I don't know I'm just gonna say 50% of the people in there in Bible study are born again um but i don't know i'm hope it would be great if it was a hundred percent of us all left and then the church who hosts this uh this international bible study would go wow they all left <laughs> but uh you know when you look at the uh, when you look at the scriptures the way is narrow and few will find it um the wise and the fur foolish virgins the um the weed and the tares uh there's another thing i was thinking about well sheep and goats but um oh well i can't remember so uh we i went to that bible study i try to play it cool hard for me to play it cool but only about five women that I felt would be happy with the news. I kind of whispered in their ear, "Hey, the rapture is about to be is about to happen. <laughs> be ready, you know." 
Um, and and all of them were uh, excited. I'm sorry. I'm getting my shirt all out of whack here. Ah. Um, I'm just really not, I'm, I'm so past the point of anybody, and I know Jerry, Tony, and some other people, I'm just so past the point of somebody saying, the day and hour we do not know. And when you look at that, and I'm sorry if I'm mocking anybody, um, but the day and hour we do not know in Matthew 24 is talking about the end of the world and that the, that the word of God exists forever. So the end of the world is at some point after the thousand year reign. So we have the rapture, we have the tribulation, then we have the second coming of Jesus where his feet actually touch the ground and we have a millennial reign with him and then is the end of the world with new heaven and new earth and we don't know if God is going, when he's going to do it and we don't know if he is just going to just like wipe the slate clean or just burn up earth and build it anew to be like a Garden of Eden. We don't know. Um, so my daughter called and I was I had just finished this is the is this the end Bible study and I was talking to her about um, she's like mom you know what are you gonna do if it doesn't happen I said I'm waiting till next year's Feast of Trumpets I really believe it's got to come at the Feast of Trumpets God is a God of order but I do believe it's this Feast of Trumpets and then I also pointed out to her I think it's pretty significant that the International Day of Prayer is on excuse me of prayer. The International Day of Peace with the UN body, which obviously the UN went against Israel December 23rd or 24th, went against Israel, allowing the UN to divide Israel. That is an abomination to God. And in fact, Israel should be getting more territory than it has right now. Um, so anyway, um, whoops, started to lose my train of thought. Uh, I just really do believe, oh, with my daughter. So I was like, no, I really believe this is it. Are you ready? Um, I think it's hard for 20-somethings. And she said, no, I am ready. I am ready. And I was like, wow, you know, thank goodness. And uh and, you know, I don't know how many of y'all have been praying for Nabil Qureshi. Um, he is the author of uh, Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus. Great man of God. Um, works for Ravi Zacharias Ministries. He passed away on Saturday after a year's battle with stage 4 stomach cancer. And I really, I, I was so sure. I really was. You know, so... Who knows? I was so sure that God was going to keep him alive until the rapture because I thought all of these Muslims are looking at him and thinking, oh, you know, God gave you that um, stomach cancer because you followed God, Jesus, instead of Allah. But anyway, we are about to be with Nabil, and Nabil, he was a very good worker for God, and he has struggled and suffered a very long time I just thought that I just thought God give him one more week you know just give him one more week but um, anyway God bless his soul and I know he's gonna be greatly rewarded um, so I went to lunch with my friend Ferry and at the end um, trying to assure ourselves and to get pumped up at the at the restaurant I turned on my phone and we listened to Chris Tomlin's home song now the interesting thing about that song i'm going home i mean first of all it makes you want to dance and sing it's just uh it's just an exciting you know where i'm going to heaven where my sins are going to be washed away it's just very you ought to look it up i'll put it i'll put a, a link in it so you can watch his original video and then he goes into his mansion that has light just coming out of it is so cool plus there's this glass house that has this fire in it like the holy spirit it's it's really cool but so fairy and i were just singing and holding hands and just thinking about how how soon we are going to be in heaven uh and we witnessed to the the waitress server as we were leaving and um i I really hope that her, that she's, I, I think the way she responded to us, I think she probably is a born again believer. Um, 
she was very open. We gave her a couple of gospel tracts and told her re to repent and that the time was very short. Um, her name was uh, Jennifer. I'm hoping to see Jennifer. Then I go to get gas, and I'd gotten all twisted around. I ended up at this, this gas station that was, I, I think I had gone like, I don't know, five miles out of the way to go back five miles to get the gas because I wanted to get it at QT because my guy has told me don't buy gas anywhere like at Kroger or all that. But like my engine's going to matter in a few days. It's not. But anyway, um, I was I was pumping the gas and this car was beside me and I said, God, am I supposed to talk to this man? He's like, yes. Well, I, so I go to get my... Um, it's a gospel track called Are You Good Enough for Heaven? It's put out by Living Waters. Uh, and I'm thinking about how I've got to start laying out all my stuff. Uh, you know, my Bibles, my books, my gospel tracks, so that whoever comes in this house will know. I mean, my neighbors know that I'm some crazy Christian. Uh, but if they're curious after the rapture, then I want to have them have materials. So... Um, and I'm not really relying, yes, I'd love for them to see videos, but they may not have electricity. It's a possibility, you know, North Korea could do an EMP and, and there's not going to be electricity, right? Uh, Barry Scarborough says the honeybees are, are leaving. There's not going to be food because the honeybees are required for pollination. Um, I just saw um, Blue Heaven, Gigi, was talking about the roosters and I, I, as soon as she started talking, I did remember that Kim Mosley had done a thing on the roosters, but I haven't watched it yet. So I've got to watch that this afternoon. Um, so anyway, I was like, oh God, I'm supposed to speak to him. But then he started to drive off, but he didn't drive off. He just drove up to the next pump and went and got into his, it went and got into the QT and came back. So I'm sitting there like, okay, God, I'll talk to him. But you know, he, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen. Well, it turned out my, I have a big Yukon XL, so it takes about 26 gallons of gas. I finished that. I put it up and I walked over to him and I just said to him, I said, do you believe God speaks to people? And he says, yes, I do. And I said, well, God told me to talk to you. And I want to tell you, we've only got a few more days before the rapture. He says, really? Hallelujah. I was like, yes. He was totally open to it. He was excited about being with Jesus. I gave him my little gospel track. Are you good enough to go to heaven? Maybe he'll leave it for someone who's going to come into his house. But I felt sure that it was really for my confirmation that uh, someone else is ready to go. And uh, so I introduced myself, shook his hand, got his name, said, you know, I hope to see you really soon, brother. Um, I don't know where he was from, but a very, very dark um, African uh, with a name, I want to say it was pa, uh, Panub or Pahub or something like Pahub, something like that. But God's going to give me perfect memory and intelligence when I get back to heaven. I'm going to remember everybody's name that I saw before, right? God's going to do that for us. So anyway, I gave him that. I was really excited. I'm driving down the road, and um, I'm like looking at a few license plates. And no, I'm not getting any confirmations there. And then I saw one car pretty far up in front of me that had R.E.S. And I don't know what the number was, but R.E.S., Resurrection, Rescue, you know. And I was like, oh, yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, we're about to be rescued. Thank you for the confirmation, God. And all of a sudden, I look up at the Kroger truck, you know, the big Kroger truck, the semi-truck, and it has ATL for Atlanta, 0316-316-777. That was my confirmation because uh, this whole channel is all because on 316... Of, of 2017, which was 5777, God gave me my first rapture dream. I had had dreams about God. I had had dreams of him telling me who was an unbeliever and to stay away from. I had had dreams of flying. Um, but this was my first rapture dream. 
where I'm a bride and I'm saying, hey, who is the groom? And they're saying, Jesus Christ is coming to get you. Jesus Christ is coming to get me. Oh. I'm sorry. It's been a long, it's been a long time of loneliness since my husband left in 2006. But Jesus has been faithful. He has been faithful. He has provided. He has given me joy. He's given me a new life. He's given me dreams and visions. He's given me friends. He's given me a love for the word. And there was the Kroger truck. 316 777. And I was like, that's the confirmation. He gave me the rapture dream on that day because he really is coming. He really is. And I know that my brothers and sisters here on YouTube, oh my goodness. I couldn't sleep last night. I couldn't sleep last night. I had taken my sleeping medicine because I have restless leg syndrome. I still, it was like, I was just like so excited. And the strangest thing is, in four years of living in this house, my dog decided to come upstairs, open up my door, and instead of me being afraid, I was like, I just like immediately woke up and, Lexi, come on. And she got in the bed with me, and I was like, we've only got a few more days. What, not so much about this bad habit. It's okay. Four years, she's not done that. The animals know what's going on. So, um, I can't wait to meet everybody. I have needed, I have needed y'all. And I thank you for all the work that you've done. And I thank you, there, you know, there are just so many of you. Uh, I just thank you that you've lifted me up. You've given me courage. You've given me um, hope. And of course, God has given me hope through his word. Um, that through this suffering and through these people thinking you're crazy because you think you hear from God and, oh, God doesn't really speak to people today. How blessed we are that we have eyes to see and ears to hear. And is it Matthew 13? I think it's Matthew 13. Maybe Matthew 11 where God says, Princes and rulers and prophets wish that they knew what you had known. But I gave it to you. I gave it to you that were lowly and worthless. Think about that. That Jesus appeared to the lowly women first when the tomb opened up. Think about it. That the angels appeared first to the shepherds with their flocks. Our God is so amazing. Our God is so amazing. And we can't wait. We're gonna have to wait, but not much longer. <laughs> so I hope I hope you listen to that song by Chris Tomlin home. It just really made me feel better. This may be my last video. I don't know, but I thank him that he gave me, me and the funny thing too is the ATL because I'm a fifth generation Atlantan. My children are sixth generation Atlantans. And to see ATL 316-777, I was just like, that's the confirmation, God. This is all for your glory. And we actually sang to God be the glory um, at Bible study today. So maybe I'll put the lyrics into that. But to God be the glory, great things he is doing and will do. And we will soon be with him. And oh, oh, happy day. I love y'all. Thank you so much for everything you've done for me. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.